Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Mind Muscle Connection Podcast. Today is a solo episode and I have a topic I want to dive into and that topic is how to manage social events in a body recomp. But first, before I dive into that, I just want to go over a few ways you can help support the podcast. So first, if you're sick of just focusing on weight loss and instead want a body recomp, then my one-on-one online coaching program is for you. I help you lose body fat and build muscle with my body recomp training, nutrition, and lifestyle methods. We look at things like your lifestyle and biofeedback to individualize your training and nutrition program to you and your specific needs. There's also at least one to two bottlenecks that we figure out that are keeping you from seeing the results that you want to see. And these are things outside of the training and nutrition program call specifically. For example, we're going to talk about managing social events. That's definitely one of those potential bottlenecks for people here with them, and they don't really realize how a big of a role they can play. So if you're interested in that and you want to find out more, uh, the link is in the show notes uh, that will take you to my services, what I have to offer. You can also reach out on Instagram and ask me any questions you may have on the coaching service. If you aren't interested in full coaching, I do one-on-one consultations where we troubleshoot any issues you have and or map out a game plan for the next couple months. And again, that is also in that link as well too. If you do want to learn more about a body recomp, I have my masterclass on it, what it is, how to do it, and you can find the link to that in the show notes as well too. And that is completely free. Uh, next, I have my, if you could follow me on Instagram, Jeff, H-O-E-H-N underscore. That's where I'm most active on social media. And then lastly, if you found this podcast to be helpful in any way, if you could leave a rating and review, and that will help more people find this podcast. With that out of the way, let's dive into today's topic. What I'm going to talk about today is how to manage social events in a body recomp. I thought this was a good topic to go into because one of the toughest challenges clients face is managing events out. We're going to have them. It's it's just a something that's going to happen for everybody. Learning how to manage these can be super helpful in, in terms of long-term progress here. So the common thought process is that you either have to choose between a social life or making progress. And that's not true, right? We can make it work. Another common thought process is it's impossible to manage social events and stay on track, which is also wrong. So today in this episode, I want to go over how we can manage those events. So like I said, this is one of the most common challenges, having that, maintaining that social life while also focusing on fitness. The good news is you don't need to choose one or the other, and you can definitely have it. However, this doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It is still going to be challenging, and you're going to have to get uncomfortable and have to make some sacrifices. But ultimately comes down to making better choices when you're out, but also figuring out what you want to get out of each particular event and what your goals are and and how far you want to push things. So it's not a black or white thing here. There are some things that we need to consider. So let's dive into them. So I think the first important thing to do, and this isn't in any particular order uh, here, but one of the most important things to do here is have some sort of game plan slash think about what you want out of the particular event. You don't have to have every last detail worked out because things are going to pop up and it's not going to be perfect, but have some sort of game plan on how you want to approach it. So what I mean by that is, is this an event that doesn't come around often and you would like to enjoy this one a bit more? Is this like a wedding? Is it your wedding? Is it a close uh, family member's wedding? Um, Again, something that just doesn't happen very often. We need to look at that and decide how far we want to take it. Or is it something that happens often? Hey, friends want to just get together. Okay. That's probably going to be a lot different in terms of how we manage it versus it's a wedding. Again, something that maybe doesn't pop up very often. Maybe it's your 15th wedding anniversary, things like that. So I think that's super important to to look at uh, there with that. How often does this come around? How important is this event to you? So for example, my weddings in a couple of weeks here, like if I was, first of all, I wouldn't be fat loss dieting during that time, but let's just hypothetically say I was crazy and that was what I wanted to do. That would definitely be a time where it's, I'm not going to sit there and track my calories and macros on my wedding day. How often does that come around? Hopefully for most people just once. If If it's more than that, hey, it is what it is. But ideally, I think our goal when we get married is to just do that once. Again, we have to figure out how often this event happens. Another thing to consider here with this is how many events do you have for the week? Maybe it's like this event is something that happens like once a year, it's medium on the priority list, but you don't have it. You haven't had any events for the last couple months or anything like that, or you don't have any for the rest of the week. So that's another important thing. So if you have multiple events, this may impact how you approach this one versus if it's the only event you've had in a one to three week time span. Again, if you have multiple events in a week, you need to start to moderate this and come up with a game plan for that because it's okay. If I have three events this week, I can't just, and you're in a fat loss phase or again, in a body recomp, like you can't just have every single one be like, you know what, I'm just going to do anything I want here at this point, right? There probably needs to be some sort of moderation and you can have it where it's 
Each one is the same moderation. You can have one where maybe it's a little less moderation. The other two are a little bit more moderated. You have some options here. Having some sort of game plan is going to be key here. Again, looking at how important the event is to you, how often it comes around, and then also how many events have you had in a particular period of time. In the last couple of weeks, we've had some like showers for uh, our wedding, uh, like couple showers. Uh, her her family put on um, an event for us. Uh, and then we had a wedding. So it's okay. I need it to be strategic here with this. Uh, I wanted to enjoy all of them, but at the same time, I just was like, you know what, I'm going to do it, whatever I want in each single one, but it's going to start to, to add up. So there needed to be some sort of moderation with a couple of them or all of them. So number two, stay on track the rest of the day week. I, I think a lot of times <laughs> People think that it's the event that's causing them to plateau, but it's also what did you do leading up to that? If you just didn't have, if you were less adherent leading up to it, that's your issue, not necessarily that one event. So realize what you do over time is more important than one single day meal slash event. This means you should focus on what you do around the event more than the event itself. This kind of reminds me of when it's holiday season, people are like, oh, the holidays are what caused me to gain weight. It's okay. It's probably not the holidays. It's probably what you do or the events during the holidays. It's what you do around those events that are the bigger issue. there, not necessarily the, the event. Now, again, they can add a lot of calories if you don't have any sort of moderation, but at the end of the day, it's probably not making a big dent. It's what you're doing around there that's the most important. So if you stay on track the rest of the day week, right? So what does that look like? So the, the day of, it's like, all right, I have an event this evening. All right, so my breakfast and lunch are going to be on track. I'm maybe dial back my caloric intake a little bit, but at the very least, you're still staying on your general game plan that you have. And so what can this do? It can give you more flexibility at the event, right? If you're on, if you're staying on track early in the day, it's like now you have more flexibility to enjoy. If you're staying on track throughout the week, you have more flexibility in that one event. And this sets you up for success during the event. You're not going into it super hungry. Again, if you have a day where you have an event at night and you're just like snacking throughout the day, you don't have a game plan with your food. Maybe you had a meal out. It's like now you're going to be hungrier and you're going to have a little taste of that tasty food. Now you're going to go into it even more hungry and that's going to be a challenge there. We want to look at the times around these events more so than the exact event itself. So the next thing, number three, is limit grazing. Grazing on tasty foods while hungry will lead to you eating more than you want slash make it tough to moderate. For myself, if there's a food that I want to eat, again, maybe it's quote unquote, not a health food or a diet food or whatever you want to call it, then I'll make sure to eat it during a meal slash as a dessert right after the meal. And this is going to get much tougher to overeat versus if you're just, oh, that looks good. I'm going to grab a little piece here. I'm just going to have one. You have one. Now you want more, right? Versus if you have something tasty, hey, just wait till it's time to eat. You guys sit down and have a, a meal and, and eat it all at once versus trying to just sit there and graze. I think the grazing is what leads to a lot of extra calories that people aren't aware of there with that. So really make sure you're limit grazing. I, I feel like grazing is a, a big culprit here of overconsumption. So just try to eat. If you have a meal, try to eat everything at once. That will help you uh, moderate how much you have versus again, just grabbing as the night goes on. I feel like with the grazing, again, it's just, it, it, you forget about it. It doesn't fill you up and you, this is the kind of, oh, I didn't really have too much, but it was ended up being five, 600 calories because of the, the amount of grazing there. So number four, if drinking is involved. So here's some tips for drinking specifically, uh, set the number of drinks you're going to have, having some sort of game plan going into it's going to be key. Uh, so if you're like, Hey, I'm going to have four drinks. That's what you're going to set your limit to um, for that night. Now it's once you start to push that four, it gives you some boundaries there, right? Again, maybe, are you going to stick to it perfectly? Maybe not. But I feel like if you go into it just with no game plan, no uh, set number, you don't really have anything to pull you back a little bit, right? It's just like whatever you do. But if you get to four, okay, now you start to slow down. You start to think about things there a little bit. And so that kind of allows you to just slow down a little bit. And again, maybe... Instead of four, you ended up having six, but had you not had any moderation or set a goal, you would have had 10 or more, right? Just some examples there. So for every drink, you have one cup of water or zero calorie non-alcoholic drink to go with it. So again, hey, I'm going to have a drink. Then after that, I'm going to make sure I have some water or maybe a Diet Coke or whatever kind of drink you like, right? So it's like you still are drinking, but you're not having alcohol, you're having something calorie free. So you're staying hydrated as well. And that can limit the amount of drinks you have, right? Six drinks can turn into three now because of that. And all these things are going to add up uh, over time there. So that can be something that you do there with that. So like the other night, for example, we had some Moscow mules. I freaking love diet ginger beer. And in between, I had some diet ginger beers just by itself without any alcohol. And that was a way for me to feel like I was still having some drinks, but I was not consuming any alcohol and it was consuming something calorie free and was probably getting, I was getting hydrated from that because that is liquid there on that. Next thing you can do, and this is weird, is 
find drinks that aren't super tasty to you. Uh, I know it's weird, but uh, I feel like the tastier drinks are the ones that one are just, they have a ton of sugar in them, right? They're loaded. Plus you're just going to, it's going to be really hard to moderate that. You're going to be drinking those like crazy because they taste good. Very similar to just grazing food there with that. So try to find some drinks that aren't exactly super tasty to you. Again, this is where you can have some, again, a one that kind of comes to mind would be like a vodka club with a uh, lime, right? It's not super tasty. You're going to get some alcohol. You're going to, you're going to probably sip on that a little bit more. You're not going to sit there and just keep drinking it. You're going to slow down a little bit um, there with that. So a potential option. I like to have like kind of tart slash more citrusy type drinks. I feel like that always helps me just slow down, but you get, you need to find what works best for you there on that. And then the most important one here is choose zero calorie, low calorie drink options as often as you can. So again, getting mixers that are zero calories can be super helpful going light beers versus heavy beers, et cetera, on that. Just realize the more you drink, the more it's going to impact you. Not only directly from a calorie standpoint, right? Like we know that obviously drinking is going to add calories. That's an issue in of itself, not in of itself, right? But we know that if you are trying to moderate your watch your body composition, that is going to add up and it's going to add a lot of extra calories potentially, right? And these calories also aren't going to help, you know, they're not going to be, they're not going to have nutrients in them that you need to look and feel your best and whatnot there. But also the more you drink, the more it's going to impact sleep, right? So that's going to impact the next day's choices. And then your food choices that night as well, too. So you're more likely to just say F it and even your food choices the next day. So yes, the caloric and the calories that we get from drinking are going to be problematic potentially, but also it's what happens around that drinking the day, the night of, and the days after that are going to be super important as well too there. Number five, stick with higher protein options. When in doubt, stick with higher protein options for food choices. Make sure your built is is. Make sure your meal is built around protein, if it, even if it isn't quote unquote lean, right? So I think of this as, oh, you have barbecue, all right, they have like brisket or something. It's like, all right, try to get a pretty good amount of brisket in there and then just lower your servings of the carbohydrates and the, the kind of sides that they have, right? Because you get that nice amount of protein there and that should help with hunger, even if it isn't necessarily a lean source. Now, in a perfect world, you would have lean sources and you could choose those, chicken, turkey, lean cuts of steak, shrimp, salmon. Salmon is higher in fat, but uh, salmon is a good source of protein. Obviously, those are things that we would want to base our uh, nutrition choices around and build a meal around that source of protein there. Number six, stay away from food as often as you can. If you're just sitting around food, if you're always around where the food's at, it's going to be really hard to say no to that, right? So really try to find a, a spot at the event where you're away from food. And that can be an easy way to avoid limit grazing and, and, and avoid just overconsumption because you're not sitting there, right? If it's there in front of you, it's going to be really hard to just sit there all night and not moderate that you're going to want it because it's in your face. Uh, number seven, visualize yourself saying no, sticking with your plan. This might sound weird, but think about yourself sticking with the game plan you set for yourself ahead of time. So, okay, I'm going to be there. I'm going to put myself in this situation. I know in the past I've been around tasty food and this is what's happened in the past. I've been around drinks. This is what's happened. Sit there and visualize yourself saying no, like how that feels, right? Okay. Hey, I'm talking to somebody. The food ends up being right there. You know what? I'm saying no to it. I'm just sitting with it. I'm visualizing myself saying no to that. Uh, same thing with drinks, right? It's like, hey, I want another drink, but I'm going to sit here and visualize myself saying no to that drink and how that feels, right? Is this going to be perfect? No, but at least set you up to where you have played this out in your mind. I and mean, I think that can set you up for it, right? Same thing with like athletes. They they talk about how visualization can help with them, right? Hey, visualize yourself making that play, being in that tough situation, and that can help you when that moment comes. This is the same thing, right? Do that. I think this is underrated and doesn't, and people don't utilize this enough. Or think about yourself saying no to whatever it is that, that doesn't serve you, that doesn't serve your goal for body composition or body recomposition. Again, I think that can be super helpful there. And then number eight, last one here, and this is just not really, a, it's a tip, but it's not anything that, that you can do necessarily other than realize you might have to make some tough choices. You have to accept that you will have to make some tough choices multiple times. There's no way around this. It's not going to be easy. You're going to want to just say, screw it. I'm going to do what I want. I hate having to think about this, but realize that this is part of the process. You may have to say no to seconds, even though you want them. You may have to wait to try that food. You may have to say no to another drink, right? These are all things that you're going to have to potentially do in this situation, right? And even if you don't necessarily want to, that doesn't mean you have to do this hundred percent of the time, but if you never do this, you may have a tougher time in a body recomp, right? If you're never making that tough choice, if it's always, oh, this happened, this happened, I had this event come up and this happened and you just you're like, well, because of that, then the same thing's going to keep happening, right? You have to get uncomfortable here and you're going to have to say no and do things that maybe you wouldn't have done in the past in order for you to change things and, and make that change that you want to change. So hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully this gave you some tips on how to 
to manage a night out, how to manage events. So that way you can still enjoy, but stay on track as well too. If you have any questions on this, let me know and I will chat with you guys next time. Mm-hmm.